uh, Madam Speaker. It's uh, a pleasure to, to rise and, and speak on this issue. And uh, I'm going to be taking a bit of a different tact on what we're uh, discussing today. And we're, we're certainly asking uh, with our motion for the Prime Minister uh, to come clean with the, the uh, conspiracy theories he's putting forward. But not only is this an issue uh, for Canadians across the country who want to ensure that uh, their Prime Minister is being honest, especially in his dealings with uh, countries around the world and with, with trusted allies and, and one of the, certainly one of the largest uh, democracies in the world. But I also want to touch on the very real consequences uh, on some of the, uh, the decisions or um, I would say uh, lack of judgment on the Prime Minister's part uh, with his actions in, in India and the ramifications that we are certainly feeling here at home. Uh, one of the, what, what should have been one of the top priorities for the Prime Minister when he went to India is try to address a significant trading issue that we have with what was one of our most significant trading partners uh, when it comes to Canadian agriculture, uh, certainly with our pulses, with lentils, peas, uh, chickpeas. Um, under the Conservatives, we grew Canada's pulse industry to a more than $4.5 billion industry. Uh, certainly in my constituency in Foothills in southern Alberta, we have uh, farmers throughout the province who are now growing crops like soybeans, chickpeas and lentils uh, that were never grown there more than 10 years ago, even, even less than that. Uh, because of new innovation, new technology, they are able to grow these very lucrative crops. And one of the reasons that they want to seed these crops is the opportunity to access new markets, lucrative new markets like India. However, over the last few months, uh, and the consequences, and a great deal of consequences of the Prime Minister's actions in India, we have seen what once was a great opportunity uh, for Canadian agriculture is now certainly not nearly to that scope. For example, in the days after the Prime Minister returned from India, uh, the Indian government raised the tariff on Canadian uh, chickpea exports from 40 to 60%. It doesn't seem that the Liberal government understands there are very real consequences to Canadians and Canadian entrepreneurs and Canadian agriculture for um, their actions in India. Not only is this uh, a question of, of the Prime Minister's uh, embarrassing performance in India, but it is also having an impact here at home. And I just want to give you uh, some stats here in terms of just how profound this impact is. So the Prime Minister goes to India. Uh, to hopefully try and to address some of these issues. He comes back, not only is the issue not addressed, but it is substantially worse. To put that in perspective, um, the price uh, Canadians were getting for a bushel of, of lentils prior uh, to uh, the fall was about $9 a bushel. Now we're getting just over $6.80 or $6.90 a bushel. That is a substantial decrease uh, in the price that Canadians are getting for their product on the market, and a great deal of that can be directly attributed to the Prime Minister's uh, performance in India. The fumigation issue is one that we were hoping uh, that the Prime Minister would able, be able to address on that, on that trip. Um, he, he, says over, he said over there that they were, they were able to bring that, that issue to the table, and I, I appreciate that, um, but they didn't come home with any agreement. They didn't come home with anything signed that, uh, that the fumigation issue is going to be addressed. Uh, in fact, uh, there's no agreement, just, uh, you know, maybe something they will discuss further as they go through 2018. Um, but we have to understand the financial consequences of that. Uh, when we are talking about a shipment of, of these products that are going across uh, from Canada to India, because we don't have that exemption on the fumigation, which we used to have, uh, which uh, sunsetted it in uh, last fall in December, and the Indian government did not uh, extend that exemption, it is now costing Canadian producers $700,000 per shipment of these products being sent to India. They're not asking us to necessarily fumigate it, but they're charging us the fee uh, when we send our products over there. They've also increased tariffs on peas to 50%, the tariffs on lentils to 30%. There is now a fear within uh, the pulse industry in Canada that India could increase our uh, tariffs on, on lentils to 100% which is still within WTO rules. So my concern, and I'm, I think the concern that is shared by our producers across the country, is 
increasing these tariffs, and the latest one increasing the tariffs on chickpeas from 40 to 60 percent, is just a shot across the bow, just a warning shot, saying to Canada, you must come clean with your actions when it came to Jasper Atwal, uh, your claims that this was a conspiracy uh, put forth by the Indian government. Uh, and until you uh, stand up and take responsibility and uh, responsibility for the consequences, uh, we are going to be continuing uh, to take this out on Canadian farmers. And I certainly don't believe that that is, that is fair in, in any way, shape or form, when our farmers, our Canadian producers, are the ones that are paying the very real consequences for the Prime Minister and his antics in India. And even every single day here in question period, he continues uh, to send mixed messages. Even in, in one single answer, he's giving two different responses that, that simply do not mix. One cannot happen without the other. Either it was a conspiracy uh, by the Indian government, or it was uh, an honest mistake, as, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs has, has said. It has to be one or the other, and it can't be both. And until the Prime Minister steps forward and takes responsibility and it shows some accountability uh, for his actions, we're going to be continuing to be facing some of these consequences. And it could simply be getting worse. For example, there is a company in Saskatchewan who just recently signed uh, a fertilizer agreement with India to be supplying India with, with potash. And what makes this agreement um, so unprecedented, it is the first potash mine in Canada that is being done in strong partnership with the First Nation in Saskatchewan. The potash mine is actually on First Nation land. Uh, this is something that the First Nations community in northern Saskatchewan will benefit from. Um, this is a, a memorandum of understanding between this First Nation, this mining company in India, to supply potash. But who's to say that they're not the next target? Is this now going to be the next step from the Indian government to say we are not, we are not going to move forward with this this agreement to supply uh, potash from Canada uh, to, uh, to India? Is this another company, another uh, sector of our agriculture uh, industry that is going to be impacted, <coughs> impacted by this? And I want to uh, give you a quote from uh, Gord Bacon, who is the CEO of Pulse Canada, who was on that trip uh, with the Prime Minister to India. And earlier on, when it came to the fumigation issue, um, Gord Bacon said, there is never a science-based reason for this fumigation. We are having a mix of biological science with political science and the two never mix well. So even with Pulse Canada and our producers across the country, they are raising alarms on the consequences of the Prime Minister's actions in India and the very real implications that this is having on the ground. And we are asking the Liberal government to quickly take action on this. Now, I have to be honest, I am not expecting them to take quick action because we have certainly seen over the last several months that when it comes to Canadian agriculture and it comes to rural economic development, they are certainly not a priority for the Liberal government. Uh, in fact, when a lot of these issues were, were going on, our, our agriculture minister was nowhere to be found. When the pulse and lentil tariffs were raised uh, last fall, uh, the Liberals uh, sent a trade mission to India the fumigation and the trade issues with our pulses wasn't even raised. Not to mention the agriculture minister was not even part of that delegation that went to India to discuss uh, possible free trade agreements with that country, with that trading partner. Then again, in uh, January, the Prime Minister goes back to India. He takes almost 20 MPs and ministers to uh, go on his, his uh, taxpayer family vacation and photo op extravaganza. But again, with one of the top issues that we are dealing with there, the agriculture minister is not amongst that massive entourage that goes with the prime minister on this trip. And when we talk about the grain backlog, another huge issue for our agriculture sector, the agriculture minister said, you know, it's not really a very serious issue when our producers cannot get their products to market. The transportation minister says, I'm really satisfied with what CN and CP are doing. Are you serious? They, at, at one point, they were having sometimes 6% of the rail cars, green cars that were ordered, were actually being delivered. This is telling me that when it comes to agriculture and rural economy, uh, the Liberal government is more than happy to sacrifice uh, our rural Canadians um, for, for their antics. And we need a Prime Minister who is going to take our global relations and our trading partnerships seriously 
Canadian agriculture depends on it. Sure, sure.